the importance of travel and how it ultimately can help you see things that you otherwise would have never seen in your life. Travel makes you become aware. Like it, it you know, whenever you're first traveling in a, what we consider in the United States, a third world country, which is much nicer than most cities uh, in the United States, you think, wow, you know, I was told Guatemala is a bad place. Uh, Oh, don't go to the Middle East. You know, they, they hate us. Uh, well, in some places in the Middle East, that's true. But uh, mostly, everywhere I've been in the world, which is a lot of places, it has been a an enriching aspect of my life that I would have otherwise never been able to do had I thought only to travel around in the United States. But I went, wow, look, I can go from, you know, Piney Woods, East Texas, on up to the Colorado Mountains. Look how wonderful. And then you go into the town. You have just a typical old town square with a couple of historic buildings, like every small little town in America. And then you got the main drag, which is the Lowe's and the Walmarts and the Home Depots and the, the yeah, no, no outside character. It, it, everything is really the same. It just has a little bit different terrain. You got a couple of mom and pop restaurants, maybe a couple of mom little small shops, but for the most part, it's big chain, big same thing America. And and until you break away and go somewhere else, like traveling around Europe, you realize, wow, the entrepreneurial spirit is much greater in many parts of Europe because you can go, like Italy's a great example. You, you can go to all these little small towns and there are no chain restaurants. No. Yeah, you, you, whenever you go to the grocery stores until recently, uh, but still for the vast majority of the places, when you go somewhere, you're going to a tiny little grocery and then you go to your butcher. Mm -hmm. you, you know where the meat's coming from. Fruit stand, everything was separate, you know, so yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's it, you, you get to know. It's not like here where, like we were talking about a minute ago, you don't know where your food's coming from. Right. You actually get to know and meet them. Hey, this guy knows I'm going to be in every week to get, you know, the steak for the family. He knows what kind of cut we like. He knows this. And, and then when you go and get it, you know where your meat's coming from. You, you know how he takes care of the animal. You know that it's being treated humanely. You know that... Uh, there's a more uh, deeper enriching aspect of life by experiencing all of these different cultures instead of being just stuck on this hard line nose. You know, this is the way life is and we are uh, the great country because we have big box stores and we can go shopping and we lose touch with our neighbors and Nobody knows each other, and you can go around the world, and people actually go outside and talk to their neighbors. Yeah. You know, you talk about convenience, which is good for us now because everybody's in a rush and everything like that. You know, you can go to Walmart and get uh, your meat. You can get a pack of nails. You can buy a car battery all in one place, but it's not the same as going out of the country where, you know, like in Paris, where in Italy, you have to go to the small mom and pop stores that do everything. And it's funny you talk about traveling, how it builds character. It just makes you open your eyes where, where you have to do certain things. Me and my kids went to Japan. We spoke no Japanese. Yeah, you don't yeah. speak Japanese? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so we went and we were just following along, seeing what's going on, what we need to do. You have to learn. You have to talk to people. You have to go and meet people and, and stuff like that. And that's why I think I love traveling. I know people that's never left Louisiana, even though Texas is 30 minutes away from them. You know, yeah. you know a lot of people. Why do I need to get out of town? <clears throat> to see stuff, don't you? It was kind of, you experience. know, experience life. Experience. Yeah, experience yeah. life. And, and people just think, well, why do I need to experience anything other than right here? Well, I'm, perhaps you don't. You know, perhaps you like to live in a this a closed loop system of of never understanding 
all of the other aspects of the world. Maybe that's why you'll always stay inside of uh, this only one aspect of who you are as a person and never explore everything else that you are because the mind is closed. Right. And I think that is a travesty. I think it, we do ourselves an injustice by not saying, man, I, I, I want to be my own personal Magellan, my own personal Columbus. I, I, I want to go see something. I, I don't want to watch uh, something on YouTube or, or some documentary on what it's like to go to Spain. Yeah, I want to go to Spain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to see, you know, watch Russell Crowe and Gladiator and all of a sudden think I know everything there is about the Coliseum. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you want to go see it. Yeah. And, and how many times have we all taken pictures and said, um, the picture does it no justice? And how can you relate that to other people that, Say, so, yeah, I'd really like to, you know, go to Paris and see the Eiffel Tower. I'd like to go to the Taj Mahal. Man, you can't describe the Taj Mahal to somebody in pictures. Like, you just can't do it. It's so big. <clears throat> I've never in my life seen a building take, like, the experiences as taking my breath away. It was that amazing. And how do you translate some pictures? Hey, this, this. Picture this building will take your breath away. No. They don't understand that. You can't, uh, nobody can get it. Not only is it beautiful, just the enormity of it. I mean, we've all traveled the world. We've seen big buildings mm -hmm. and we've seen gorgeous architecture everywhere, but I've never had one that was so big and so beautiful and so impressive where you were just frozen for a moment. You're like, wow. And, and so all of those, and it was built for love. You know, this guy wanted to memorialize the love of his lost wife. And well, I mean, he did it in some not very kind ways, but uh, that, it, it, it's still magnificent. And it, you lose everything without just sometimes going, like the habit. Yeah. That, like you it's going a, out. It's, yeah. You know, it's an adventure, adventurous spirit. Uh, story when I was uh, 20, I'd saved up uh, money working at a, uh, at a job and a uh, guy I worked with there kept talking about Europe and I'm like, God, I've got to go do that. I've, I've got to do that. And so I finally came to the point where I didn't want to work there anymore. I'd saved up enough money, took off, went to Europe for, for uh, about two and a half months. Before I left, uh, picked up about know, a couple grand in, in traveler's checks for my dad and dad helped me. And, uh, uh, <laughs> I was reading an article where Pink Floyd was playing the wall. Oh, at, no. Yeah, at the wall. It was, right? it was a year after the, uh, after the, the wall came down. They were playing the wall at the wall concert. So I picked up tickets to go to that because I figured that was something I'd like to do while I was there. For sure. Uh, nice. you know, even, even got a, uh, uh, a rail pass that, that allowed me to travel the trains the whole, the whole time I was there. So, but it was a picture. I didn't know any, well, I take that back. I did know one person there, uh, a friend of mine's uh, sister and her boyfriend were living there in Paris. That's kind of my, my uh, kind of made that my base of uh, operations. So I flew into Paris, hung out with them for a couple of days and then just pick, picked a place to go. What was your first place? All right, so you're a 20 year old kid and you're like, man, I'd need to go to Europe. Everybody keeps telling me how awesome this place is. And so you pick Paris because you know there's you got a friend there. Yeah, it gave me a place to start off. I, I, so whenever you go to Paris, how do you decide where to go from there as a kid? So um, actually before I'd left, um, one of my brother's friends, I ran into him in a, in, uh, in a bar there. And um, he was he told me that he was going down through Africa. And that they were going to start in, uh, in, uh, where was it? Uh, in Greece, in, on the island of Eos. They were going to spend two weeks there, nice. or a week, no, it was a week. And then they were just going to go down all the way through Africa, down to uh, South Africa. So I said, well, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'll be over there. Why don't I meet you guys in Athens at this day, at this time, at this hotel, and we'll, we'll take off from there. And that was kind of my first thing. And my... Well, that, that's a little different than Europe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like coming a lot of Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so 
I left Paris and decided to go down through uh, Italy. It was probably a week, about a week away from when I was going to meet him. So I went down through Italy, stopped off in, uh, um, where did I stop off? Uh, that's where the blue hole is. Uh, where pizza was created. Well, I'm a brain it, fart. Italy? Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, there was a bit, uh, oh, uh, uh, Well, anyways. Florence, uh, Bologna, Verona. No, yeah, no. Who knows? Pisa. Milano. It's where Pisa. the blue hole is. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 Napoli. Napoli. Oh, Napoli. That's where the pizza was created. Uh. So, went down there, spent, you know, three or four days hanging out, checking that out, and uh, went out it, because one of the places I wanted to visit was the blue hole. I'd seen it in pictures and magazines, pictures of it. And I was like, man, that looks incredible. I've got, I've got to go check that out for sure. So went over there, spent a couple days and then, uh, got back on a train, went down to the bottom of it, uh, to Italy to Brindisi. Yeah. And then, uh, took, took a boat from there, <laughs> overnight boat over to uh, Athens. Dang. And met those guys the next day, and and uh, nice. we hung out there, spent the night, and and then we took off on a, a boat for Eos. That's a heck of a trip for a, a twenty-year-old kid. Trip. Yeah, nice. Yeah, man, so, I've got yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's a good trip. So, did you speak any other languages, or just no. you just had yeah? No. No. Mm -hmm. Did you remember the feeling of being a twenty-year-old kid and going to the airport? And I, whenever you land in a foreign country as a 20 year old and you go, wow, I'm in a different country now. Like getting a, yeah, I guess that was Charles de Gaulle airport. You landed at in Paris. I'm so, thinking, yeah. Yeah. So you're, uh, you're there. I know Charles de Gaulle airport is really confusing to me. Yeah. And the times I've been there were from my thirties until now I'm 50 and it's confusing for me still every time. Like oh, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's the most confusing airport in the world to me. Yeah. So that is an overwhelming experience for, you know, just some young dude all by himself. Did it you was, have any feelings? But I felt like I had the confidence to, to, to handle it. Right. Well, it gave you the confidence to later be a SEAL. Well, <laughs> yeah. Like, if I can do this, yeah, I, can do I can do that. Yeah. 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 And, and it all started with and, Paris. And, and, you know, and there's, and there's some things that, that, that I'd done when I was younger that, that I think believe, yeah, gave me the confidence that I could do anything. I could handle the unknown. Right. So, uh, yeah, that was a great, uh, that was a great experience. I, I mean, I went all over. In fact, I went with those guys and say we're going down through Africa. They're like, hey, why don't you come to, uh, to, uh, um, to Cairo with us? So I'm like, I'm like, nah, I don't know. I got to be back because... That wall to wall concert was like a week later. Oh, the concert the was really more important well, than going to Cairo. Well, we, we, hell yeah, it was. Well, I mean, he's, 20 he's twenty year old. You know, as a twenty year old, you know, you, you have different priorities. No, for sure, <laughs> for mean, sure. Pink Floyd, the wall at the wall. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, yeah, yeah, that's kind of hard. You can always yeah. go back to Cairo. Yeah, yeah. The, the yeah, pyramids yeah, aren't going yeah. anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they come, come on, Steve, you got to come with us. I'm like, all right, all right, I'll go. So went down there with them. And, uh, and actually we, we left there. I went out there with them to, for a couple days down at the tip of the Sinai Peninsula, uh, mm. this place called the Hob. So I hung out with them for a few days there. And then at that point, once again, by myself, I had to leave them and I'm like, then I'd get back to Cairo. And, uh, so I took a cab in Egypt. In Egypt. Oh, and that was the other thing. I wanted. To, <laughs> no, <laughs> you bring, you're bringing up yeah, memories. Right. So and that was the other thing. Is 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 I wanted since I was there, I I had seen, and heard some other people talk about um, diving in the Red Sea. So oh, I bet that. And I fun. and I was a diver at that point. So I was like, yeah, I've got to do that. Um, so was it cool? Yeah. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah, I did it when I lived in Yambu and it was the most beautiful. It wasn't red at all. No, very clear. Just, very, but yes, it was beautiful. Incredible. I mean, I, that's the best diving I've ever, I've ever, so you're saying it's not like the red river? I've had in my life. It was weird. There, it was, uh, it was amazing. Um, oh, what's that? Uh, I forgot where I, where I dove up. I took a cab from there 
And it was weird. I mean, here I am in this cab by myself as a 20 year old. I have, you know, I'm just trusting other, I'm trusting You're other trusting people. You're trusting the driver. I'm tr you know, I'm trusting other people to, 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 to you know, to do the right thing. And, and, and you know, kind of really didn't know better, but uh, to a certain degree. Did you go to the Red Sea Diving Resort? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, where's that? It's on the Egyptian Yeah, yeah, side. what's the name of the. I couldn't tell you the town. Oh, God, it's a, it's a, it's a famous place. There was, uh, yeah. Or y'all can um, look it up. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, apparently I didn't, I didn't. I didn't do my preparation. So, um, but uh, interesting thing about that is I wound up uh, when I went out to dive that that next day. I spent the night there. Went out to dive that next day with with a dive group. Got on a boat, and um, one of the guys there, he was a uh, um, Egyptian general during the uh, it was a seven day war. And, you know, he was telling me all sorts of stories and he was, and he was telling me about the Red Sea and there used to be a lot more, I mean, it was incredible life to me, but he said it, it looked, it was, it was even the colors, everything, the coral was, was, was different before then because the amount of, um, explosives that were there, I guess he said. So the war there, destroyed there, there, a bunch well, of the yeah, line, destroyed right? a little bit of it. It's what he was telling me anyway. So, and, and, uh, I met some really interesting people, went back. After the dive, um, spent the night, met a lot of interesting people there at that uh, at that resort because I had to. So, so how, how does that? How did that experience? You think? How did that make a mark on your life, or did it make a mark at all on your life from that point going forward? Did that change any of your perspective of how you saw the world? Um, or did you already have it figured out at twenty? At twenty, no, definitely didn't have a figure. Out. <laughs> we did, but I mean, duh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to a certain degree, people are the same. I mean, they have the same wants, the same needs. Uh, but were you anticipating that before leaving? I didn't really know what to anticipate. You know, I've heard stories or this, that, and the other. But right. uh, um, I mean, well, what year was that? That was uh, ninety. Yeah, we're about the same age. So ninety. You know, when you were twenty, that's a long time ago. Yeah. So. Right on and I, I really wasn't worried about anything. It's kind of a different. I mean, there was no at that point. There was the Soviet Union collapse. There was no war. There was no. And we didn't have a, a, we didn't have a time. We didn't have a boogeyman at the moment. No, there wasn't a boogeyman at the moment. Was that was a good thing. That yeah. was the next year. <laughs> a very good thing. Yeah. So there, there's, we, there, it was. It was yeah. just. It was nice. Yeah. We Life was fun. We we didn't have a boogeyman. So the the takeaway that I just got from. You weren't sure what to expect, but then you found out people are the exact kind of people everywhere. Because you can be getting your car and drive right now to wherever, uh, Houston, and you can be in this horrible traffic and all this crap. But if you go into, you know, some little uh, bar, restaurant, or hotel, you're going to end up running into regular old people that are just nice. If you ask somebody for directions, people or want to help you. Yeah, people want they to help do. it, and it doesn't matter where you're at. Where you're at. So whenever you go to some other country, they are even bend over more because yes. they know that you are not from there, and people ultimately want to help other people. Most of them, not all of them, but the vast majority of them, from my experience, man, they, they, they will they'll spend extra amount of time with you. They know you're not from there, mm -hmm. and and just bend over backwards to make sure you're okay. I've had strangers when I've been around the world just, hey, come to dinner the next day. Absolutely. Yeah. We used to do yeah. that in Saudi and everywhere. Some of my greatest friends were from all over the world that we all met up in one place in Saudi because we worked in oil and gas. And then we all kind of went our separate ways. Guys went to Africa, guys in Oman, Abu Dhabi. And I still talk to them and text them to this day. They were the greatest people that helped me when I wasn't. You know, didn't know what I was doing. So, yeah, I think it's phenomenal. Like one of the most profound travel experience I had was uh, me and my mother, and uh, me and my mother and Monica went to uh, Paraguay. We had a little stop in Panama, and we were going uh, to Paraguay. And from Panama to Paraguay, relatively short flight, and. My mom is sitting behind me, 
she's talking to this stranger, some guy I don't know, and they're just back there yapping it up, yappy, yappy, yappy. And hey, mom, watch this. <laughs> mom, I don't know. I'm telling a story. Hope you get over it. <laughs> so they're yappy, yappy. And I started to get a little irritated because mom started telling uh, the guy about my experience of, of practically adopting, uh, at the time, those three boys. And so this stranger, we don't know him, says, man, that would be very interesting. I bet that would be a really good experience for my son. And I'm listening to this because they're talking loud and they're sitting right behind me. I'm like, oh my God, I cannot believe my mother's telling this dude all this crap about me. And I, and I keep turning it around. You're like, mom. I'm like, mom, <laughs> you know, and she's mom. So she gives me that look like, son, you just turn around. I'm like, yes, ma'am. You know, <laughs> this is bullshit. And so, yeah. and, and so we, we get to the, our hotels, you know, mom says their goodbyes to this guy and, uh, you know, being the dutiful son, you know, I just look at him like, uh, that's enough of you, pal. <laughs> you know, you've had enough talking to mom there and, uh, mosey on about your way. And, uh, he, because of course mom told him where we were staying, which was another irritant. <laughs> so this guy leaves a note with an invitation to go to his house to dinner the next night. And mom goes, let's go do it. I said, like, mom, we don't know this guy. I was like, I, I, you know, we're here for some business and we don't need to be going off to some stranger's house. She goes, oh, let's just see how they pull up. And if they look bad, then we won't go. And I was like, all right, I'll, 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 I'll grant you that. We'll do that. So they, they came and they had um, two separate cars. Him and his wife came, picked us up. They were nice. Everything looked fine. I was like, all right, let's just do it. Let's go. So we go, we pull up. They have this big, beautiful home. It's really nice. We go in and they have this big spread of dinner all cooked for us. And, and this, uh, this guy comes out and he's talking. We're having a great time. Ended up spending hours at his house laughing, eating the best food, uh, drinking the best wine. And, then he asked me, he goes, will you, uh, would you allow my son to come live with you? This guy doesn't know me either. That's the point of the traveling. Like yeah. he doesn't know me either. He goes, I, I'd really like my son to experience what the other three boys had when they lived with you and keep coming back. And, uh, I sat there and I looked at him. I said, man, I don't have enough room in my heart for another kid. Like, I don't think I can do it. Like, I, I'm, I think I'm hearted out. Like, <laughs> like this is all the love I think I got for more kids, you know, and I'm already giving it to them. I don't think so. And, and right about that time, uh, his boy comes in, you know, he's this little snot nose. Uh, I think he was 16 or 17 and comes in from playing soccer. And they, you know, they join us a little late and we sit and eat and we keep talking and he keeps talking about his boy and he boy, it seems disinterested, but he, He's still interested. You know how little young boys are. The longer the night went on, finally I just acquiesced, gave in, caved like a, the big wuss. <laughs> it's like, fine, bring him over. <laughs> fine, I'll take him. <laughs> and it ended up being one of the greatest experiences. Of, of course, I had room in my heart. I uh, ended up that kid's been with me nonstop since then. I'm going to see him in you know, two weeks from yesterday. It, that's not that's an abnormal travel experience, but a lot of crazy stuff like that, or maybe not like that, but crazy, wonderful things happen whenever you travel the world that you would never get from, you know, hey, I live in Louisiana, let's go to Dallas for the weekend. You know, you're going to have a different experience than saying, hey, I'm going to go to Europe and then go to the you know, Africa. Yeah. It's a little different. Yeah. But I think everything, things happen for a reason. There's always a fate. There's always something I believe. Yes. I know that's another story. We can talk about that, but we could also talk about us growing up. There is up some destiny there. Seven days, sorry, seven houses down, seven miles away. I mean, we can talk about that, but I think there's always a reason for something that happens. Yeah. And I think we deny ourselves our natural, um, we deny ourselves the possibility of all of the other connections and all the serendipitous experiences that are waiting for us when we stop ourselves from 
learning, from traveling, from exploring uh, new relationships with uh, whether it's business friends or acquaintances, kind of like how me and you met. Yeah. You know, what would it have been like, you know, we have a mutual uh, acquaintance, really, for me at the time. You knew him better than me. And they said, hey, y'all two should probably get together because y'all seem like y'all are a like mind sort of guys. Yeah. And what if uh, we'd have happened to been close minded and said, hey, no, nah, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need any more friends. You know, I got my own little tight circle. You know, you know always, that'd be huh? that'd be stupid. It's uh, it's like yeah. say no to travel. Yeah. You'll never know till you know. Right. And I always no. tell my boys. I said always say yes to everything. You know, just say yes. If somebody invites you out, say yes. If somebody wants to go, do, just yes. say yes. Because you know, I've I've had conversations with my kids, and they're like, Dad, you know, they got a party and study. I don't want to go. Just go. Well, then they call back the next day because that was the best time I've ever had. Yep. So yeah. I think you are absolutely uh, right in that. Say yes. Say yes. Say you know. I mean, of course, there are all sorts of caveats with that. You got to be uh, you're you're cautious and you're well, a, you're yeah. a, yeah, I mean, you're, you're not heroin. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna say no to the heroin, right? You know, you're, you're gonna say no going to uh, you know the mafia's uh, crime center. You're, yeah. you're gonna say, you know there's obvious things you're not gonna be doing, but for the most part. Yeah, you're never going to get those offers in the first place for the majority of the time. So you would just go with it. Go with the flow. Just allow life to expand and you be uh, your biggest character in it instead of limiting your own personal play to this small geographical spot and and kind of even within ourselves. Like me telling uh, Umberto's dad that, I don't have enough room in my heart, dude. I just don't have it. And I'm not going to do it. Like, I'm not doing it. Like, I, I could feel, like, all of a sudden, it was almost like my heart got jealous. Like, no, nah, you got these other, you you have this over there. You don't need to open the side door for that, you know. You can do it. I, so those kind of things are really important. So you got a story. <laughs> so I want to add a couple things about uh, Egypt while I was there. And... Uh, um, it kind of mentioned something you, you brought up previously about looking at pictures and having perspective and having, having uh, um, you know, maybe you can't see the hugeness of the picture through the pictures or having the perspective. If you've seen, you told your whole life that the, these, these pyramids are huge and this, that, and then we went on and saw the, the, the you know, the, the main pyramids, rode some camels and, and did the whole thing. And, and of course, this is a perspective of a, of a 20 year old. Got yeah, so that in there, um, <laughs> but I really didn't find the pyramids that impressive. Maybe that's just me. I don't know if you've been there. Uh, there's the one, there's the one, one pyramid. The one place yet? I haven't uh, no, been. No, I have. And but did you find them? I mean, like I said, for me, it, maybe it was just me in that moment, that time, that that you know, my age or whatever it was. But I did not. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I just did not find. My, my funniest story was I was sitting at McDonald's. <laughs> Looking at the pyramids. Of, of course, you everybody. Were. Yeah, everything's just way out yeah, in the middle of nowhere. Right no, it's, it's, like right it's in the middle of the city. city. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm sitting there eating a cheeseburger, looking at the pyramid. I was like, this is the coolest thing. My hotel was wrong with right this. there by the pyramids. I'm looking out. It's so, it, yeah. yeah. Well, did you find them to be larger than you thought or smaller? No, a lot smaller, smaller. than I thought. That's what I thought. Was, yeah, because everybody it, on the movies and everything, they're these huge pyramids. You can't. Well, were they bigger when you got up to them, or was it a distance thing? Um, yeah, fairly close. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, I just didn't. I just didn't find it as impressive as the stories throughout my whole, whole yeah. life and the right. pictures yes. and the pictures and everything else. But so you felt like you and a couple of dudes could just grab some of those stones and build them yourself? Then? Well, no, not that. <laughs> no, no I, won't, I won't go that far. Maybe a couple. Not, more. not at all. No, no, I'm not willing to uh, go there. Okay. <laughs> all right. Just making sure. <laughs> But I don't know. I'd have to go back. We can build one outside. Yeah, I, I want to go really, really badly. I yeah. want to go so bad. Yeah, yeah. And, and also on that trip, so I went out and saw these other pyramids. Uh, found these guys. I thought we were just walking around. They're like, hey, we're going to take, you know, you guys want to go out to these secret pyramids? Well, 
yeah, you know, we'll, you know, we'll take you out there. It only costs us much. And, and uh, I think these guys were, I was, I was hanging out with them. They were buying incense and, I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> so we're like, yeah, sure, we'll do that. So next morning we get up, we go out with these, with these guys. Well, the deal was is you had to ride horses out there. Now, I'm not, oh. at that point in my life, I really had, I mean, I've ridden a couple horses, nothing, nothing too, I would not call myself. Uh, so in the sand, the horses in the sand. Equestrian, no, I would not. So, and the worst part about it, they put us, they put us on these horses and I'm thinking, you know, my whole, I, I read uh, a Western saddle, we have something to hold on to. Right. Well, there's these jinky ass stirrups <laughs> on, on a, uh, on an English saddle. And there's no horn and there's nothing to hold on to. No. And and these horses, they knew where they were going because they, they've done this, you know, right. many many times. And you actually went outside the city, and but these horses, a lot of times, were almost at a at a at a, a full sprint. And let me tell you, that was one of the times in my life that I was going to die. I was like holding on, just doing everything I could to, to make sure that if I, I knew if I fell off this thing, I'm going to be in the hurt locker. And uh, yeah. um, horses can. But it was yeah, it was an interesting. <laughs> it was a very interesting experience. We got to these pyramids. Those pyramids were older than the other pyramids, and uh, they were interesting. Uh, it's hard to it's, it's hard to have just the way they, they 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 looked, and they they looked a hell of a lot older than they. Uh, so, so you're saying you couldn't have had that same experience uh, living in uh, California? No, at the time. No, no, no. And I mean, it was just adventure. But I've always been an adventurous kid. No, you know, no pyramids. Kinda, no pyramids I, in California. My, yeah, and you're and, and you have to have that that. That spirit to find these to find these things and have those experiences in life. Don't Every, you think that everything builds on the next? Uh, but don't you think that yeah, everything builds on the next. So that that kind of is my point. That if we, we are, um, you you can cultivate that spirit of adventure. Yeah, you, you don't have to just circumscribe yourself to this notion of I'm I'm trapped in this one spot. I had of a. A close friend of mine, he, he since passed away, but he had a son, and his son was about mid twenties or so, just got out of some type of graduate school, and uh, they wanted a super academically brilliant. They wanted him to be a professor there. I forget where it was, maybe it was some Tulane or something like that. But he said, "Well, before I do that, I want to go uh, travel, but I don't have any money and." So he he went to he went to New Orleans, got a little gig working on some uh, shrimping boat, made a little bit of money, found some other cargo ship that would hire him, hired him to. You know, I mean, he's doing just crappy work that he said was awesome because his mindset was right. He knew where, and so he gets this crappy job that he loves to tr go across the Atlantic, goes and then find some other crappy jobs to do while he's in Europe, says he's having the best time of his life, because he's staying in these hostels, which we don't have in the yep. U.S., yeah. you know, for a couple of dollars a yep. night where you got five or six, you know, young yep. kids sleeping in the same place. And he said, I would, I, I would make friends with these people. We'd go out and find the cheapest beer pub and, you know, have beers and talking about our life stories with each other. And then... I would uh, look on the map and go, well, I want to go there. I just saved up enough money from these crappy jobs that I loved and ended up getting to know these people. And they turned me on to the notion of going to this other city. So I go to this other city. I go there and then I find some other rinky dink job, which most Americans would say rinky dink. And he loves it. And he goes and just travels the whole a big chunk of the globe. And then comes home and, and continues with his uh, academic career. Yeah. Wow. So I. Oh yeah, wait, I have to throw this in real quick because, <laughs> because, because I finally it. because I finally remembered the name Sharm El Sheikh. That was that was a dive resort on uh, oh, okay, on, okay. on oh, Red, Red Sea. Sea. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there, I, there. I knew it would come to me at some. <laughs> Right. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. Well, so I would say, like, me and the boys yeah. travel. We, we've traveled all, and we've met these people. We've met some people from America that are doing those crappy jobs. And there was a couple I've met in Japan 
where the bar was no bigger than this table. And it was the coolest place. We kept going back the next day. Well, this girl, she goes, I'm just passing through. You know, she's staying at the hostel, doing all this. And I, we Facebooked and everything like that. She travels the world teaching yoga in these amazing places, more and more. I mean, just going all to these things. And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, oh my God, that sounds terrible. Because <laughs> I'm working seven days a week, 12 hour days to make enough money to go up, take these trips. That sounds terrible. Yeah, and here she, sounds yeah that sounds terrible. <laughs> and here she is working here until she makes enough money to go the next. And I'm like, yeah. okay, that's that's where I want to be. And she's doing what she likes to do. She loves everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah Life is I'm meant to, to be enjoyed. Out. It's meant to make money and do other things too. But if you're not, if there's no enjoyment there, then, then what's... And growth. What's the purpose? I mean, it, well, it, it makes it, you look at the whole. It makes you look at the whole uh, societal construct of where we live, and you think, all right, our measure of su success here is uh, never con traveling is considered thrown into the mix of that. It is you. You go into this profession. You, you go do this thing, and you spend the vast majority of your life doing this stuff in order to where you can have a nice car to drive back and forth to do the stuff you end up not liking. Yeah. So, you know, you get the joy of driving your, your decent nice. car, nice car back and forth. And then whenever you get to come home and spend almost no time there, you get to pay the mortgage and the, uh, a extortion and property taxes yeah. and, and all this yep. uh, to, to have a nice time to sleep. And then if you're lucky, you have, you know, one day uh, a week to enjoy your house that you're paying for that you're never in. And then maybe if you're lucky once a year, you know, you get to go to the redneck coast of Florida, yeah. <laughs> and, which is fantastic. I love the redneck coast of Florida, yeah. but you know, come on, it gets old, you know, year after Every year, year yeah. you know, I mean, let's, year, let's do yeah. something else. We can, uh, and and that we were stuck in this mindset that oh well, maybe I'll travel some when I retire, May, maybe I'll expand myself when I retire. Well, how you retired? Then your body's uh, decrepit. Uh, you yeah. can't get around very yeah. well. Uh, you, you're a, a target for any thug yeah. that may be around. You're oh, yeah. just so many reasons. <laughs> and you're gonna your die. <laughs> you know, what I mean, you're, you're so close to dying. You're like. You know, well, man, I don't feel too good. This walking a lot's not that great. Yeah, you know, oh, it's, it's a horrible so you, mindset we yeah. have. So you get older, and you have the money to travel, and you travel, and all you do is sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I'm like, I stay in the nice hotels. I just want to lay there. I just want to lay in bed. You yeah. Know, and then get out and go see, okay, don't want to go take a nap. Yeah, okay. But yeah, you're right. It almost goes into what you were talking about earlier. The mother nature, the yeah, the, 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 the humor of mother nature, the humor of mother nature. <laughs> yeah, because it's so it's it's so true because it, it's directly applicable to travel as well. And man, you know our our bodies. It's a shame that we're not just shot out of the womb being you know six foot and we know everything and we have all the money that we want and then over time you know we just deteriorate and lose i don't think our moms yeah. would like that but <laughs> well i don't know we probably friend. met a few girlfriends that didn't <laughs> wouldn't mind <laughs> but that, you, i was just gonna say i mean that's where it pays off to have uh an outstanding father or, or a mentor of some kind to Oh, for to sure. guide you and not waste what you have. Yeah, and I am very fortunate that that uh, Napoleon Hill, the book Law of Success, put the, the the idea into my mind that you need to be around people that are something you're not that you want to be. Yeah, and and so I just picked up. I, I knew where they were. I knew who I wanted to be, and not being them at all <laughs> i went to go hang around them and yeah then shit now i'm uh, now i'm them yeah and i want to be a drinker and a cigar smoker so I, okay. see and it works out great and because I, I, I like to have a couple of cocktails <laughs> now, hold hang, your uh, breath <laughs> Uh, see, that's just good fun. I'm going to go scuba diving in the pond later just to, you know, bring back some old memories. Well, I'll, I'll put on some uh, some waders and I'd watch y'all. 
<laughs> you better not beat the canal yet. Yeah. 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 You die first. Hell and joy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, need to fill them with water moccasins first. <laughs> <laughs> for you, yeah. You know, and for the uh, most part, people think it's dangerous uh, to travel. And I, I've never had that experience. Uh, we, I have had a few instances one at a train station in Italy, one in uh, a town center in Florence at midnight, and uh, uh, no, and one in uh, Buenos Aires. It was the closest that anything ever happened. And easily avoided. Like, I, I could have just easily not had any problem, but, you know, I don't know, something happens and I don't know. You know, one guy I was telling you earlier, you know, he's yeah, because we're we're working on the this course, this self defense course, and this guy's pointing at me and he wants my money. I don't understand him. I didn't know the first word in Spanish and other than I think Calle whatever it was, uh fuck off and uh but, but I knew that one, but I don't can't remember Calle I think Cabron, something like that. And He's pointing. So, you know, I, I did this little thing to him and he realized that was a mistake and, and he moved on. But I didn't have to do that. So all these people that feel like, oh, it's a, there's a threat. Like, you know, we're at a cafe in public and he's obviously like, he wasn't going to attack me. I, I could have easily just stood up and walked inside if I was a frail woman or you know, a little wuss of a, you know, a soy boy in the U.S. You know, I mean, you could e easily just maneuver a, a, around that uh everywhere we've all been in dark places in foreign countries and never felt any threat and if you felt something that eh, that's a little problematic it's the same way being here you you avoid that you, you avoid it it's yeah just yeah, situational you, awareness you yeah know, you, 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 just, you just go you just, you just go away you, yeah yeah you, you don't uh you don't do you know some foolish things uh like me he's pointing and i'm thinking you know i've been really practicing this move <laughs> i want him to keep doing that you know <laughs> and so he did and that's what i did i was like eh, i'm gonna practice this real quick and yeah, fingers broke yeah. yeah well you know it wasn't pleasant for him but that is a uh it's a misconception in our population that Oh, you know, me and my girlfriend's traveling somewhere. We're going to be unsafe. That that is mostly uh, not true. That's just mostly not true. And and I hope that people, as you graduate to, you know, maybe like you said, uh, go to Cancun or or, any, or Belize, you know, you, just, you start spreading your wings and you see how these other people live, and like I went to Antigua, Guatemala. Right, a few months before the uh, scam demic, and the first thing that, that I got there out of the cab, this fellow standing on the side of the road. He has this cart of uh, coconuts, and he had got a, a drill, and he drilled in through it and stuck a straw in it. And I was like, man, I wonder if that's any good, you know? Because I've had coconut water, you know. So I wonder if that's any good. I went and grabbed one, you know, I give him, you know, whatever it was, it was practically free, you know, just a couple of pesos or yeah. something. And uh, I'm sipping this coconut. I'm like, holy crap, this is outrageously great. Like it, it was so fresh. It made you feel so alive. And, and then you felt good for even, uh, you know, this guy's selling his stuff on the side of the road. He's not getting harassed by the Department of Agriculture or the uh, the sales tax office or the local community. You know, he's just there. Yeah. And and it was wonderful. Like, oh, this is great. This is the way life should be. This is this is awesome. I agree. You got anything else? Yeah, I like nut juice. That's all, yeah. I, that's all I got yeah. out of it. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> I grabbed that thing. I took the big sip. I found him pissed in it. <laughs> oh man, this is the best piss ever. <laughs> Glad he didn't have to have a license. Uh, all right, where are we going with this one? I'll have to back up. <laughs> all right, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, wrong uh, story. Yeah. <laughs> Good deal. <laughs> Nut juice. All right. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's 
good, you started. That's just good fun. <laughs> so, all right. What's, uh, I got to ask, uh, Ooh. craziest story. I know we were talking about them earlier. You know, things you've done. And then and, and, and I'm kind of start. We've all traveled. Favorite place you've ever been? And my kids are the same way. We've traveled a lot. Somebody will ask me, it's like, okay, where's the best place you've ever been? And that's like, I can't answer that because I went to Paris and had the best, you know, cafe or, or I had the best espresso and brulee. Uh, I went to Madrid and had the best steak in my whole life. It was fresh right across from the, the bull. The matador ring. Yeah, yeah. I don't know <laughs> if it was human or the bull, but it was really good. <laughs> but it's like each place I've traveled has something great. And I can't say my best place I've ever been to was this. You know what I mean? I, I don't have a best place either. Other than I am, I guess because one of my boys lives in Italy. But I have a natural... Uh, feeling a magnetism toward uh, Italy. I, I love being in Florence and I, I love, absolutely adore Venice because it just not only the rich history, the few Venetians that are, you know, from there and have been you know, generational Venetians. Oh man, they're just wonderful. They still have these uh, like the stationery that I, uh, the letterheads that I write on, they're, you know, they make their own paper and they, they stamp the uh, stuff themselves. Yeah. And I mean, it's just really cool leather shops that they make these wonderful cigar stuff and all these leather goods and uh, custom journals. And man, it's tough to go anywhere. Like when you want to go shopping and you're looking for stuff, I have these wallets that I've had for, I don't know, probably 30 years. And they're handmade in uh, right outside of Florence. They have their little family shop, you know, right, not far from um, uh, Vecchio uh, Church. Br Bridge thing. And uh, man, it's just wonderful. Uh, you have centuries of people there that have uh, handcrafted fountain pens and just I mean just cool stuff so I'm naturally drawn to there but I wouldn't say it's my favorite because they're all my favorite yeah they're, they're every, it's to me it's like a beautiful wine or a beautiful woman let's go with woman no. a, a beautiful woman can be beautiful in heart in mind, in body, in spirit, intellect, everything is be everything is beautiful. And then you can meet another one with all of those same attributes, but they're different, but they're both equally as beautiful. It's pretty rare to find any one of those except in Jill, but the uh, they're there. Are you talking about women and, 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 and wine? so you can't you, you can't choose. No, women I mean, and wine. Well, women and wine, but I'm talking about just women. You can't compare like which one's better. They're just different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just different. The, that that one's not better than this one. This wine is so good, but wow, this wine is so good. Yeah, but if you yeah. put a cork in either one of them, they're really better. All right, so <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> that was to your story. Or, where the hell is this going? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll just, I mean, the only thing I can add to that is, is um, every place is different. And they all have their, you know, whether any places in the United States I love. I mean, I love Montana, but, you know, I love it in the summertime. Being on Flathead Lake. <laughs> but would I want to be there in, in, uh, in uh, January? <laughs> not, yeah. not necessarily. Um, well, yeah, just whenever, wherever you go somewhere, it's tough to pick a good one. Like, I don't particularly yeah. like Vegas, but my nephew yeah. begged me to take him to Vegas. For He was like eight years old and kept begging me, nine years old, asking me, I'm like, surely this is going to subside, right? This is a, why does this little kid want to go to Vegas? He's my nephew. He's 10. He asked me again. 11, he's asking me. And then he just starts asking me a lot when he's 12. 
I'm like, what are we going to do in Vegas? Like, for one, I don't really like Vegas. No. And he just kept bugging me. And I said, fine, we're going to Vegas. So me and him went to Vegas. Don't like Vegas. Had the best time with my 12-year-old yep. nephew in Vegas. Yep. Always say yes. I mean, we had the best time, me and him. Just We went around all the little uh, fancy restaurants with the little fake Eiffel Tower, which is really pretty yeah. high. Yeah. <laughs> and... And went to did the roller coaster thing in New York, New York. Mm -hmm. Had a fantastic time. And yeah, don't say no. Just say yes. Just say yes. Just say yeah. Oh, your little nephew wants to go to Vegas. Well, you know, it's pretty cheap to go to Vegas. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. But, you know. I mean, yeah. it's, it is Vegas. But it, there but, is, you know. you know, my boys asked me, and said, Dad, will you take us to Thailand? And I, and I absolutely said no. <laughs> <laughs> why? why? So don't yeah. because, all, uh, uh, because you know that all women are equally as wonderful, <laughs> just in their own different ways. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. That's the only yeah. time I'll say that. Where's this story going? No, going nowhere yeah, yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, Thailand. Interesting place. Uh, all right. And yeah. All right. So being, uh, but both that. of y'all got to travel a lot in the military. And so you ended up not liking Iraq. Uh, yeah, it was a terrible place. It is, it, is it terrible because of the weather or is it terrible because we just bombed the crap out of well, it? Well, the hotel accommodations that I stayed in. <laughs> was a 16-man tent with 22 men inside. So you're saying you enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that I look back, <laughs> you know, our uh, well, uh, like bathroom facilities was a wooden box with uh, four holes cut in it. I got to know my, my Army buddies very, very, <laughs> yeah. very well. So you like yeah, right. like most of those places, it was functioning before we invaded. Yes. Yeah, it was very functioning before we invaded. Yeah. But it, was there, in your travels, was there anyone that you would like to go back to uh, that was not, you, know, you, you went there for the military, but now that you're a civilian, you'd like to go back and visit? No. Mm -hmm. No, I think. They only sent you to shitholes. <laughs> But how, about, how about you? The play we were talking about Paris earlier. I've been to Paris five times, and I loved it because every time you turn a corner, it's, it's interesting. Brand new. Yes, it's yeah, it's a really interesting place. Very interesting. Um, for me, oh, in the military, but, well, I, I really enjoyed Cambodia. It was just it was kind of a wild west thing. And, I heard uh, Cambodia is beautiful. Yeah, exactly, and it's yeah, I'd love to go back there. Um, uh, ancient to go back to the pyramids and ancient sites that, that we were talking about before probably the most interesting I mean the, the most impressive where I was impressed and you know all the things I saw in Europe or in the Middle East and this that and the other the most impressive thing I for me was uh, um, I probably have to cut this because now I Having a brain fart. Maybe. Well, that's what happened. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should get older. Was, um, is that what happened? I was really I mean, impressed maybe, with this place, but hell, I maybe, forgot what it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. Now we're talking about the damn, opportunity. That goes damn, that that goes damn half that's why you don't need to travel when you're retired. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> go when you can still a, remember this. Perfect, perfect point. <laughs> <laughs> they had circled right back around. Oh. <laughs> Saki um, circled back. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. My, my half timers are setting in again. Um, <laughs> oh, you're cracking me up. So, uh, yeah, uh, former is, Navy SEAL, are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's Kevin's fault. He <laughs> fed me whiskey, and um, I can't. I mean, you know, there are probably a lot of places. Uh, uh, Jordan. Uh, the uh, Oh, did you go to Petra? Petra. Yes. Petra was the most impressive thing I... Well, you know, you, you think back to the uh, the, uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah, the yeah. last the last crusade, and they're going through that that uh, that that tight canyon, and they open up, and there's that there's that building, and that building is there, and it's it's damn, it's impressive, but it's not just that building; it's a whole gigantic city canyon filled with buildings cut into the side of the rock from different time periods and everything else, and you get towards the bottom. And there's, you know, something from Rome with the, the amphitheater. And it's mm. just, to me, 
So the canyon, open so, like it. <laughs> so you have this canyon and they're just, it's a city. All this, and from different time periods, carved into this into this huge canyon that just goes on and on, and 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 um, uh, the natural um, rainwater collection, huge. Have you been there? I have read so much about okay. it. It pisses me off that I haven't been actually. It's almost like you have here with the with with, with the plastic containers. I mean, these are huge. Um, I mean, with a small opening, I don't know how they did it, but you know, anyways, I just got in there and, and did whatever they did. But just you know, I don't know, at least I don't know, hundreds or thousands of gallons of, of uh, water they they could collect it into these uh, into these naturally built. Uh, oh, tens of thousands of gallons. Man, yeah. man, man made. Uh, um, that's what I'm looking for. Container or yeah, just, like they're yeah. a pool the, almost. Almost, yeah. And and even when you're when you're when you're coming down that 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 initial really tight canyon before it opens up that building, I mean you can see where they they had built um, uh, rain gutters on the ground to pick up the water as it spilled off the side of the uh, the Jane. canyon there and just send it and send it straight down. And it was to me, and I've seen I mean I've seen a lot of Roman stuff. I've seen a lot of uh, which is um, impressive. The and to me that was very impressive. But there's one thing I didn't get to see, and uh, uh, in Libya there's the most preserved Roman ruins in the world that nobody ever gets to go to. Hugest place, uh, Leptis Magnus, untouched. That's a and, shame because Libya was okay. me, You look that up on the internet, Leptis Magnus, and you can see these. I know uh, a few guys. Um, we came. We that saw. I worked we with. I had, had been over there and checked out. They said. say that's probably. <laughs> The most, one of the most impressive things they've ever seen, because mainly it's 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 untouched and some of the most preserved Roman ruins in the world. I don't know if I've uh, ever heard of that place. Uh, yeah, that's you, a know, damn you, shame. you had, you know, that's a joy of having conversations because people just were afraid. Stuff. You know, I mean, from you know, growing up in the eighties, you remember, you know, it was oh, Gaddafi was the bad. Uh, but man, uh, you talked to constant, yeah. you talked to those people there, and they're like, Gaddafi was wonderful. It was, it was. And now they're a shit show. Yeah. It's, uh. Yeah. Thanks, government. So, yeah, it's all another story. But it's just, yeah, that was one place I didn't get to see. One place, um, I've seen over there was, uh, uh, um, a, uh, it was actually a city there on the, on the coast that, you know, at first was built by the, uh, the, uh, the Greeks and then took over by the Romans. Which was most of that part of the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All of it. Uh, <laughs> Alexandria, that's where I'd like to go to. Well, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't get to go down there, but I, yeah, I hear that's that's very impressive. So, yeah, I just think it's wonderful. Uh, so, out of all yeah. y'all's experiences, Jordan is probably what you like. I guess Italy and Paris for you. Paris for me. I love it. I love the culture. I love the people. I love the food, the wine, the drinks, uh, just everything, just walking, everything. So in Paris, everything is so slow and casual. There's no rush. They take naps. They do everything. London, London is like a million miles an hour. I like it if you're fast paced and stuff, but it's all go, go, go. go. It's, it's go, go, go. Then you can find nice clothes in London. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice clothes. Well, but I mean. <laughs> if you care. Paris is just. <laughs> relaxed and and i think that's what i like and plus it's uh new orleans is one of my other favorite places mine too and, and you know we were talking earlier about you know i never felt you know um like unsafe unsafe in other countries but new orleans oh yeah i feel unsafe because sometimes you have to walk it down the alley to get to the next bar the next place yeah it's sometimes crazy. you don't have a choice new orleans yeah, is a yeah. tricky place so, i had a place right in the corner out of all the places i've ever been new orleans is probably the unsafest place i've ever been and i love new orleans I like do I, I absolutely I, I love the feeling unsafe but that's just me. mardi gras uh, mardi gras is a whole different thing no, yeah i mean i was just there for that it was you know with a group of guys we were over in texas we were just like all right let's, let's try yeah, there you, i mean you know we're... once you see the beads throwing and the nah, boots flying nah, after nah, that nah, you're like yeah yeah, nah, yeah. Nah. and all the there's too many people at that time of year yeah but Most of it i don't remember so but simply <laughs> the, the great part about all of these things is it made us appreciate life in a way that we'd have never understood yes before that 
we'd have never appreciated the the just the wonder, the the courage it took that guy out of necessity. Maybe it wasn't even courage; it was just necessity. Where he's selling me the nuts, you know, that I'm drinking out of the the coconuts. That is just wow. Uh, you know, just uh, every everything about traveling opened your eyes in a little bit of different way that we're not taught here, that we're not we're not shown. Yeah. It gives you it gives you a perspective, and you're able to compare, because you can't compare. If you only know one thing, you have nothing to compare it to. And now you can compare, you know, this to that, and and understand where you're at a little bit more. Sure. And, and when you travel the world, and you realize that some of these countries are having uh, this infighting because of outside influences, like Rwanda sticks in my mind. You know, we just barely heard during the Clinton administration about uh, those things. And, and those people really didn't want to kill each other. It was kind of like they were, it wasn't that they were forced. All of a sudden they get this inbred anger, this this divide and conquer mentality. Well, if we don't kill them, they're going to probably kill us. So we mm. need to go kill them. Yeah. Uh, and, where they, and where do they get that? Yeah, well, they get it where from us. They, I mean, we get it from, you know, where Democrats and Republicans, why? you know. You know, why, why, yeah. Yeah, it's all, but you don't really start to fully understand a lot of that stuff, and until you say, "Hey, let's go dip our toes," let, yeah. let's, let's let's jump a little bit. But you're right. You know, you go see these other countries, and they're the same way. They don't like their government. They don't like their stuff. But they're the nicest, greatest people ever. And I was thinking about this. You know, here we are talking about traveling. All of us been all over the world. People that are watching are probably saying, "Well, shit, I've never been to treat." You know, I'm Louisiana. Texas is probably the only place I've seen. Save your money. It's not very expensive. It's a lot harder now since they're devaluing it. Well, but yeah. <laughs> so one of my boys is flying to Singapore for a month for work. And he's like, why don't you come and go? And I'm like, I'm just looking up flights. So the first flight I looked at was $1,100. The next one was 888 Now it dropped down to 700 I mean, $700 to go to Singapore for a couple, you know? And that's not a bad deal. It's not a bad gig. It's not bad. a bad gig. I mean, anybody that wants to travel, find your place. Find out what's calling you. I would not recommend Iraq, Kazakhstan, <laughs> wherever. You know, Ukraine right now is probably not a good place. Yeah, but, well, I wouldn't recommend see, Iran either. Yeah, and go see the world. I, I think that's a good... I have been to Uzbekistan. Oh, how was, was that? that? I flew that, right, that, flew that right was, over that was a fun going, place. I, I love that. I just, you know, it was just interesting. It was, uh, we see a lot of, you know, we see a lot of remnant from the, from the Soviet Union, but, but, uh, um, I had a great time there. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, just, you know, met some interesting people and, and, uh, some fun people. Speaking of travel, I can't believe I haven't even mentioned India. Man. Yeah. Taj Mahal. Well, I mean, just to Taj Mahal, that was it. Most people don't even know Taj Mahal's in India. Mm. But I went to India. I, it was one of those things where I'd always wanted to go, kind of like going to Petra, where you've been. Yeah. I ran into a buddy of mine at, uh, who was at this uh, steakhouse over in Marshall. He just says, hey, I'm going to India. We're talking about somehow travel got brought up. He goes, well, I, I'm going to my house in India because he lives in the States and in India. He goes, why don't you come over? Just come over. We'll go, he goes, I'll, I'll take you around. We'll spend a couple of weeks together. And then, you know, you and your brother, well, I didn't tell him my brother at the time, but he said, then you can go, you know, explore whatever you want to do. And I was like, and I said, okay, that's great. When are you going? And he said, uh, in about a month. And he says, just enough time for you to get an expedited visa. Of course, you have to have your government permissions and your stamp of approval that you're a good enough person to travel. <laughs> Don't get us started on that. But yeah. then, then, you know, um, went right? and had the best time. And, you know, they, of course, because of their British influence, uh, they travel and they drive on the opposite side of the road. Totally insane. They their idea of the honk is considered courtesy. Yeah. So here we get all aggravated and fired up. Why are you honking at me? You know, uh, man. There they're like, oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And it is wonderful. 
And on the back of their, uh, they're similar to our 18 wheelers, but they're just they're, no other different. And they paint them in all these beautiful the colors. Yeah, they paint them in all these pretty colors. <laughs> yeah, the they, they, they have all their uh, just wonderful colors. And they have on the back in English, because most people speak English, uh, at least the drivers, and says, thank you for honking. Thank you for honking. Yeah. And man, you, you imagine if you just put those kind of bumper stickers on people's cars here. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> well, Fuck this. you! Why are you honking at me? <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, just but... a little switch of attitude you can discover in other places that makes you go, golly, man, why do we not think like that? You know, somebody's honking at me for a reason. Like, maybe I'm uh, texting somebody at a red light and it's been green for a minute and I need to go. They're honking Two at me. Two seconds. Not yeah. even a minute. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, whatever. But somebody's letting you know. But and you shouldn't get aggravated. You, know, you shouldn't like, take it personally. Just do what, yeah. Yeah, you're like, oh, it's my turn to go. I need, let's go. Yeah. Or uh, anything. I'm about to run into them and they honk and let me know. It should be, thanks. No. That, or never even think about it. If in a bigger city like New York or something, he's got... Oh, we well, honked at me to make sure I didn't, you know, hit him. Or <laughs> it's just a, an amazing twist of perception, and it's just like a light switch. You know, it's off. It doesn't offend me. It's it's helpful. You switch it on. Yeah, uh, it is helpful, but you're uh, pissing me off. Yeah, I'm offended. Yeah, I'm so offended. You know, you're, you're that that kind of mindset. You do not. And cannot grasp unless you travel the world. Exactly. You could do a whole show on driving in other countries. I could oh, tell you. Oh. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's, it's a whole nother. Whether you're driving in, in uh, let's say, Pakistan. And, you know, you're, you're, uh, your steering wheels on the right hand side. And you're, you're driving on the left hand side of the road. And it's, it's a whole nother thing. And to spend months there. And then, you know, you come home and now you're driving back. And, you know, it kind of gets a little, you know, things get a little, <laughs> a little yeah. confusing. And, and you have to be aggressive. It's, uh, you have to see your hole and you have to take it. Yeah. And once you do that, then people will let up. If you, if you have this thing where, uh, it's timidness, you won't, you won't go anywhere. And that's the story people, of life. People just stomp. Yeah. Yeah. They'll just, they'll just, yeah. They'll be sitting there forever unless you can, you gotta see the hole and take it. Which is that. Yeah, let me let me add to that one. See the hole and take it. I'm all for it. And say yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You know, where are we going? <laughs> yeah, where, 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 where are we going with this? I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, it's already we had roundabouts, so I took the hole and dug it. <laughs> oh, the roundabout, yeah. roundabouts are awesome. Man, I, I, I think so too. I roundabout. wish we did. It's the greatest. I think it's one of the one of the best inventions ever. Yeah. Well, traffic continues to move. It does. It continues to move and you're not stopping wasting time. Yep. And like here, you know, you get a red light and if there's nobody anywhere and you just keep going, all that, but there's a cop hidden over there, yeah. you're going to come get your traffic you, team. Your, right. your, your, your ticket yeah. because, you know, we're not adults. We can't look and say, there is zero people on this road right now and I can I go. Okay. Yep. Uh, instead, we're going to hijack your time that you only have that amount of and you can't buy it back to sit at this red light, that's a, um, that's problematic. So I'm a big fan of the, of that whole roundabout thing too. I think it's yeah. a fantastic invention. They really don't care if you have a roundabout or not in India. <laughs> or red, yeah. I've never saw a red light anywhere. You got uh, almost as many people as in China. I think it was 1.3 billion when I was there. They, that was the touted population. That's a lot of people. And the craziest drivers ever. I thought Rome was bad whenever I went to Rome. I was like, man, this, these people are nuts how they drive. India's a, a, a whole nother oh, yeah. level of that. And it was so liberating. You have to, you have to be aggressive there? I mean, is it, uh, yeah. What's it, what's it's the it same, like? same thing, man. You see an opening, you go. You don't have no hesitation. Yeah. Which is a great rule for life. Yeah, because yeah, people will back off. I at say that, that all the time. Right, you see a hole, you take it. <laughs> you don't, it's, it's a rule of Matt's life. <laughs> so, so, so you, you just maneuver right into it, and that's a wow. I, I just am so thankful that I have friends that have traveled the world that I can relate to, because how horrible is it to have traveled the world 
And whenever we want to share those experiences with other people, you know, that we care about, but they haven't traveled the world or barely have traveled the world and they just don't even get it. And they don't even want to hear your conversation because they don't understand. Oh man, how frustrating. Yeah. It's, it's good to be able to share those things. And then you tell me about how great Petra was and I want to go. And now you make me want to go even more. Yeah, yeah. Th- that's what comes from yes. bubbling up out of this wonderful stuff. So yeah. when I was in Saudi, we were, we worked two months. We got a two week paid vacation and I was running out. of. I mean, I traveled everywhere and I was running out of places to go. And I'd ask the guy that just came back from somewhere. I was like, Hey, where did y'all go? Oh, we went to the Maldives. I was like, I want to go to the Maldives. <laughs> oh, we went to, you know, uh, 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 God, uh, uh, Greece. Come on, Steve. I know. We went to, we went to Greece. <laughs> went to Greece, but we had to go to Santorini. <laughs> <laughs> too old now. Catching up. Everything's like just coming together. But it was like Santorini because you saw the pictures of the blue and the white and stuff. And I was like, well, I want to go there. So we go there. We went to Athens. We had, had some of the best Greek food. Took a moped. I mean, it's... It's Greece. So it's all... <laughs> the blue. <laughs> That you that you want to know, and you always find out, like you said, you know, Petra. I was, I was a six hour drive from Petra, but never went. Oh, oh. I was there. I had my own truck. I'm like, we could have went, but never wanted to. Just I always wanted to travel. Go, yeah. go over, get on the airplane and go. Yeah, and Jordan, Jordan's amazing place for uh, historical sites. I mean, there is so much there. And there's so much in that little tiny area. If you can, you know, you make it over to, uh, to Israel and, and, and it, there's just so much to see there. It's, 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 it's incredible. Yeah. One of the uh, big problems with traveling now is that, you know, you have to have these tests for safety and uh, all this crap. So now you can come back into the United States as a U.S. citizen, uh, now, according to the U.S. State Department, without uh, the the scam and without uh, any test, uh, to go to Guatemala, you still have to get a negative test. Yeah. But my boys have not been able to see me and come <clears throat> come here for uh, a little over two years now really? because they they can't come in the country without having the uh, injection will not let him. But as a U.S. citizen, and that's bullshit, I, I can come back without either. And no, none of that makes any sense. No. And, and so once again, we find ourselves with a it's uh, clown world. Yeah, it's a clown world. And we have this historical place of Iraq that leaves a bad taste in your mouth um, because of the experience. But wow, what a historical treasure trove that place is yeah. jeez it, and, and what, what what do we do <laughs> it's kind of like we're the romans uh destroying and burning down the library of alexandria you know we we're, we're going just to to destroy all these fantastic parts of human history the fertile crescent yeah the fertile crescent we're, we're destroying it and uh, and did destroy it. It, it it's a very sad state of affairs uh, it always makes me happy recently when i see these uh uh old w uh, w uh, uh, talking uh, about his uh, leadership uh, his his leadership course that he was doing recently oh god makes me want to throw up yeah yeah <laughs> A whole other story, but that was really that was good. Y'all got anything else you want to talk about? Uh, probably a million things. I'm gonna make another drink though. Right. But uh, you were talking about the alcoholics only. Never mind, I'm just kidding. The alcoholic women. Oh. Well, hey, I'll tell you what's really good if you want to go to if any of y'all want to go to the Middle East and y'all do enjoy wine when you travel, uh, only stay at the five star hotels and you can have all the wine you want. It's a lot more expensive. The normal, but they will serve it to you, even though they have special permits inside of those places. So one of the things I, I did want to talk about, yes, over there. <clears throat> so we were talking about, you know, people they don't have enough money to travel or something like that. So what did you spend this weekend on alcohol, food, and drinks? Around about 
this weekend, uh, well, I had brunch with you on, well, yesterday. Sorry. And Steve was with me, so I think that was uh, about a little over a hundred bucks. Yeah, and then, bucks. then today was about a hundred bucks for lunch because I had another the uh, superstar with us and. I don't know, but two hundred fifty dollars. So if you if you saved that, didn't go out for a couple of weekends, you could take a trip to Europe or somewhere like. Oh man, for sure, and you can so you easy. can make it so you can make it so inexpensive, and there's so yeah. many wonderful stands like the fruit stands everywhere. One of the greatest things that changed my mind before I built this, uh, or right as I was building this farm, of how I wanted to do things was the homelessness issue when I was in Rome. They had, uh, close to the U.S. Embassy, there was a street, and it, we were, luckily we were in season, and they had oranges. Instead of just ornamental shade trees, just, just BS trees, they yeah. had fruit trees lining the road. Anybody, That's awesome. Yeah. Anybody can go grab it. Yeah. And, I mean, That's you talk cool. about eliminate, it, it instantly popped into my mind, wow. The food problem in this country and in every country could be solved instantly if we just started planting edible things everywhere, like ground cover. Well, we're spending all this money on cutting, uh, and this is something that occurred to me in Italy when we get off of an interstate. And, you know, we got all this dead grass stuff here in the United States. Like, we're paying people to mow, mow all that. Where in Italy, they'll farm all the way up to the road. Yeah. And I was thinking too, why would we not have That's that covered in, in just strawberries, yeah. just ground cover? Why wouldn't we have, instead of paying all these people to cut grass and spend the money on tractors and uh, diesel or gas, uh, why wouldn't we just plant food everywhere and everybody would have all the damn food they want? And I'll be dying. They you. would. I'll they would, you. and it would, the problem would be solved like that. But no, no, we can't do that There's because you know most people haven't traveled the world, so they don't know these things, and they don't think about it. And instead, we should just spend our money on uh, having more people in jail than China and Russia combined. Abu Dhabi, they have those palm trees that do the dates and the figs. Of course, that's the big thing over there. But the whole median is out there. So they're cutting the grass around, but they're picking the figs and the dates and everything, and they're selling those things and are giving them, you know, give them to the people. To or whoever. It's just, it's a wonderful thing. And your eyes are not just blown open with those ideas and thought processes unless you get outside of your personal norm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those type of things, yeah. It cuts into people's prop profit and control. Yeah. Well, there you have it. And the more and the more you travel, uh, the more those you're people have a different perspective. Yeah. You're gonna see something. Wait a minute, why aren't we doing this? Right. Why is upset. this happening? Yeah, we get yeah. upset. It's like why are we dependent on the government when we can start doing our own stuff and making it really, really easy? Like Maybe. none of this, none well, of that. Even, even energy and oil. No. I mean, do you know how much oil? Of course you do. No. It's in this, it's in this ground. I mean, I've seen it. I think there's a shitload more of oil in California than what they're, than what they're telling you. Cause I remember oh, there's more I oil. helped out in this, uh, there's no oil scarcity. Yeah. There was, uh, <laughs> the, uh, Naval Special Warfare used to run a sniper course out, out in Kalinga. And one day I went back behind the range and back up in his mountain. And this other guy, uh, one of the main instructors, and um, I mean, there's oil coming up out of the ground. So I've, seen, you, I've seen back in there. Did you shoot and it? You, and it was like bubbling crude. It was bubbling yeah, crude. His name is Clint. Next thing you know, <laughs> Steve's a millionaire. The Ken folks said, Steve, move away from there. <laughs> St. <Saint> California's <laughs> place. <laughs> Are you loaded up and dry? <laughs> We went Beverly down to Beverly Hills. Hills, that is. <laughs> oh, that, that's just great stuff. Oh, but there's so much oil. That, that's another farce that, you know, we've just been uh, propagandized to believe. But Yeah, I mean, energy could be nothing. And there's stories out there about free energy. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, yeah, who that's knows a whole other topic. Yeah, who knows these things? Yeah, so traveling uh, allows, it gives you opportunities that you would otherwise never have. And we've been in so many places, uh, and we, we were talking just a second ago about, 
how we have lost in the United States, you, you can vastly see the difference in other countries when we think about the, this notion of uh, liberty or uh, freedom and entrepreneurialism that is so prevalent in other places that is not as prevalent here as it once was. Yeah. And um, I can kind of give you some examples over in the, uh, in the Middle East, you know, they're very entrepreneurial there. And they have to be, well, they starve. There is no, there's no welfare system. Um, and they set up, you know, everybody has a business of some sort for the most part, or they work for somebody, but um, a lot of people on the roadside set up fruit stands, uh, uh, you know, other, other, I think it's something I'll say they uh, set up, but it even gas little little they'll put they'll put uh, uh, gas in these ten gallon containers and they sell it to people as they as they you know as they're driving up you know this road or that road um, because they know there's not a gas station for so long or something. right and they can set it up uh, anywhere they want they don't they don't need I mean maybe at some point but I I didn't see it with the amount of people setting stuff up permission for the government or getting you know. This license or that license, they 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 set it up and they made money to survive, and uh, that sort of notion is lost in this country. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? I mean, I'm starting to see it more here. Um, I don't know if it's the uh, the economy or um, I've noticed uh, out on the West Coast, um, people. Uh, especially from Mexico, setting up little fruit stands or these drink stands, or um, you know, selling fruit on the side of the road a lot more than 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 I'd seen in the past. So that's great. Yeah, I, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. And that, I was really surprised when, because you know, when you travel someplace, especially here, when you go, oh, I'm going to go to the Middle East just for a visit. I just want to see what it's like. People in your family and your immediate uh, friends that are just on the fringe of your outside circle, what are you doing? You're you're crazy for doing that. Why would you? Why? It's so dangerous. Like, oh my God, I hope I don't read about you getting beheaded. You know, like people just say this off the just nuts. And I, I was like, well, first of all, I'm not going to Pakistan or Afghanistan, uh, and I don't know. I don't have any information of how safe or dangerous those places are. I'm just, I'm going to Qatar and, and I'm going to go to the Saudi Arabian border and that, that's it. So I think it's going to be, I'm going to be all right. Yeah. Normally those places you're going to be, you're going to be just fine. Yeah. I, you know, you, you know, you can't go to Iraq. Well, I mean, I wouldn't go to the majority of Iraq, but up in Kurdistan, it's, it's, uh, uh, I feel fairly comfortable flying my my you know a family you know in there to to do something and then leave. Of course, I mean there's nothing I really want to do there, but um, <laughs> uh, but I mean their their malls, uh, uh, their businesses. I mean some of the malls you'd figure you're in the United States there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, the, and the people are very nice, and there's not there, especially in Kurdistan. It's a different it's a different different mindset. People want to succeed. People are doing everything they can. And uh, and they keep the bad actors out. So yeah, I was in, talking about traveling. I was in Abu Dhabi, and it, I, I've never felt so safe in Abu Dhabi. The police didn't carry guns. There was there was everything. I mean, well, I mean, if you're going to steal something, of course you're going to have punishment. And the punishment over there was you're going to stay in jail. Your family has to hire some company to feed you and clothe you. Yeah. So if they don't pay that company. To feed you and clothing, you're going to starve. You're going to have to do stuff and stuff like that. Over here, shoot, they get three meals a day, a, a degree, a, you know. But, too, we lock people it's up uh, more than any other country in the world. Yeah. Like, we have more incarcerated. You are correct, sir. Yeah, so that that's like a double, you know, that we've turned the prison system into a, a money system, money you know, made. a private enterprise. We want yeah. to lock more people up. And, and that's a whole different matter because that's a subject of we should have rehabilitation centers. We should have uh addiction centers and w w all these other things instead of uh just locking people up and destroying humanity instead of rebuilding and, people and most of us from administrative law right it, it, that's yeah. just kind of that's craziness in and of itself but yeah. you know whenever we are talking about travel uh when i went there 
I was a little apprehensive because I had not, not necessarily haven't been there before. I hadn't been in the Middle East before. And it's hard not to be or not to allow that that propaganda to sink inside of you. It, it's hard to to go, you know, I have watched the news a lot in my life. That's the worst thing he can do. <laughs> right. So I, I've really seen all these things that appear to be really bad about these places. And wow. I mean, the first thing we get to the airport, everybody's friendly. Like they they looked at us. Obviously, me and Trey are, you know, big American guys. We stand out. Right. And so, so everybody would look at us. And we just thought it was great because nobody looked at us like, oh, oh God, no. They, they were like, oh, what, 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 like, oh, I wonder what they're doing here. But it was never an apprehensive sort of, uh, oh, I don't feel safe. It was never that. And when uh, we would do something, got in the, the car to take us to the hotel, driver was super nice, get to the hotel, they're super nice. Of course, the hotel I uh, picked had a cigar lounge in it because that is my number one priority uh, when traveling the world. And so uh, we get in there and everybody's great. Like it was great. The first thing we did was immediately go to one of those bazaars where they have all the, you know, the shops Spices and, and yeah, all that stuff. The first thing we did, because uh, the hotel people said they have uh, some of the best places to get the Air the Arab dress. I forget what they call it. You know, yes. the white thing and the, the headgear, because I just thought it would be fun to wear it and uh, show a little sign of respect that we weren't there, you know, to, you know, walk around as just rude tourists. Uh, we wanted to kind of get absorbed in the culture a little bit and feel what it was like. And man, we did that everywhere we'd go. They would, uh, st total strangers, walk up and ask for permission. Hey, is it okay? Uh, let me show you. This is one way to do it, that, to fold your oh, stuff. Yeah. And then they go, you go somewhere else and they say, oh, can I show you? This represents our tribe, do it this yeah. way. And you go, oh, if you want to, you can keep that. But if you want to see, this is how it is to do this. And everybody's crazy friendly. And one of the best experiences for me in the Middle East was me and Trey are having this conversation because it would be like uh, me and you, Steve. We walk up to each other. You've seen it. When they touch noses and... It's like a, a handshake, you know, or whatever they do. I don't get it. But we were laughing because we had seen a bunch of people, a bunch of guys do it. And my brother Trey goes, I will never do that. I will never do that. That is the weirdest thing ever. So this guy comes up <laughs> less than five minutes later. We're sitting outside on this little deck thing on the Persian Gulf and Starts talking to us. He asked to do the hair thing. This is about the fifth or sixth time it's happened. Uh, we asked him if he wanted to sit down with us. And uh, he, he said, yeah. And Trey got up to, and grabbed another chair for the table. And as soon as Trey stood up, that guy stood up and bumped noses with him. And Trey's eyes get real big. I mean, we were just talking about it. And I was like, this is great. <laughs> so what happens, I asked the guy, because he spoke pretty decent English. I said, can you do that one more time? But I need to film it. <laughs> Trey looks over at me. He's like, oh, uh, you're an ass. <laughs> you're a total ass. But, but then Trey thought it was funny. You know, like it was an okay experience. He was like, okay, that's kind of a little outside of my comfort zone. But it was kind of nice because the stranger guys, he's wanting to visit with us and understand us and we understand him. And, uh, it was just a joyful thing. But it's that that's their their culture. I mean Right. We're in their space. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're doing that. So I lived there for like six years and I'd noticed myself picking up stuff and doing things that they did, you know, and everybody and I was like, okay, this is this is strange. Took a step back, but but I honestly believe you got to get out of your comfort zone and go see certain places. Yeah, don't go to Iraq. I went to Iraq once, hated it, you know, one star, never. <laughs> but other places I've been, I've learned. Thanks, so Bushes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Army. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's just interesting. 
But uh, the other thing you were talking about too is like, you know, I had an opportunity. Uh, uh, my old boss said, hey, I'm going to send you to the Middle East. And so, of course, I told my family, hey, I'm going to the Middle East. And everybody said, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't do it, don't do it. It's so dangerous. And I'm like, well, have you been? I'm like, no, we haven't been. But it's like you said, you get the good 20 minutes of the news and everybody thinks it's dangerous over there. I swear that was one of the safest places I've ever been in my whole life. I felt comfortable, felt good. I knew I could go anywhere and talk to anybody, walk around at two o'clock in the morning. You know, it's fine. Of course, you don't go down alleys or stuff like that, like you wouldn't do in the United yeah. States. Use but, a little common sense. Yeah, use a little right. common sense. But, but it was good. I had no fear. Yeah, I, I think it's funny how we think of third world countries and we can go to almost any city in the United States that is either in the Rust Belt of America or the United States or anywhere and it's totally run down, horrible. It's like me picking you up at the airport on Monkhouse Drive and there are these two gas stations I pull in. It's beat up, it's nasty, it's falling apart. And I felt like that was a third world country. It looked like it, it smelled like it. It was horrible. Yeah. And, and I can go to Guatemala and Guatemala City is, for the most part, like any other city, it has its really nice spots. It has some really spots you don't want to be in. But we call it third world uh, because it doesn't have, you know, chain restaurants everywhere. Because they don't have uh, Lowe's and Home Depot. Mm. Like, I couldn't tell the difference. Uh, oh. Like, matter of fact, Shreveport, this, the town where I'm at, and or near, or Marshall, or... Uh, parts of Dallas or Hugh, uh, like everywhere around here, it was in in some ways worse than being in Guatemala. Now, being in Doha made everything in the United States look like crap. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it was everything was first class, modern, clean, new. I mean, nothing of trash anywhere. I mean, nobody thought about putting even a cigarette butt on the uh, on the ground. Like, there's no disrespect to their environment. Uh, you, we call those places third world because, you know, as a, before traveling, I'd go to the State Department's website and see what their travel recommendations were. Like, did they say, uh, this, this has turned into a hobby of mine before I travel, because it's comical. Be very cautious. Be very aware of, uh, and I'm thinking, <laughs> where are the warning labels before we enter Detroit? Yeah. You know, and yeah. where are Ch Chicago, Chicago or, capital or, of the world. Yeah, right now. or New Orleans, you know, yeah. I mean, wow. Uh, I, I don't, I don't understand that mindset. And I, I think that sort of propaganda of fear mongering makes people feel safe in what they know. Yeah. So so I, I know this thing, so I, I don't want to go out and experience something new. Kind of like why do uh, daughters of alcoholics want to marry an alcoholic? You know, that's a real high statistic that that happens. Yeah. So why do they want to do it? That's they're they're comfortable in what they know. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather, I'm more comfortable with what I know than what I don't know. Yeah. And man, what what are the uh, opportunity costs that that it, from not experiencing something new? Huge, huge, uh, re really, really huge. I think we do ourselves and our friends and family and neighbors a disservice by not expanding our horizons. It doesn't mean go get a sailboat and never come home. You know, it doesn't mean just just yeah. go travel around be a nomad. I'm when I'm not saying that. I'm saying. Whatever you get the chance, when you want to go on vacation and you're thinking about going to the Redneck Riviera, you know, the Panhandle of Florida or Alabama, maybe consider a short trip to somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, Belize or somewhere uh, cheaper. So just get away. Right. You know what? You're right. All my friends, that is their vacation spot. Let's go to Florida. Man. Let's go to Florida. Let's go. Florida's okay. It's nice. Yeah, it's, it's good. But okay. you know, there's other places around that's probably just as cheap to fly there oh yeah you know? i mean you just you can just get your toes a little wet you know you just hop down to cancun and stay in one of those all-inclusive resorts just to get a little 
a little something different. Uh, and then stretch your legs a little bit. You know, maybe go to uh, Belize, which yeah. is just right around the corner. You, you know, maybe, maybe hop down to uh, Panama. Maybe hop, not Panama City, Florida, but Panama the country. You know, just, you know, hop down somewhere. You know, if you have the financial ability or want to save up, you know, for your big trip, you know, go around Europe, man. You can stay in Europe really cheap. Very cheap. Very, and you and the train system. Oh my God, you can get everywhere on the train, and, yep. and it's comfortable. It's not. It's nice, and it, it's efficient. It mostly runs on time. Yep. It's unbelievable, and you. Uh, it, it, two of my boys. Whenever they did what you did, which is pretty unique, to be in a U.S. born kid to go, unless you're super wealthy, is yeah. to go travel Europe. Yeah. But those European boys, that was the first thing they had to do. It's like a rite of passage. Yep. Like, like I, I can't become a man until I go out and explore all these different countries. It's like just what they did is who they are. And I just think that is wonderful. It, it's just a wonderful experience. It, that doesn't negate them being propagandized and, and force fed a bunch of BS, but it does yeah. open their eyes a lot to think, hey, th those people aren't so bad. Uh, those people, you know, it's kind of like us uh, in the 80s. You know, I don't think Russians really hated us and, and we didn't hate them. Yeah. As our governments are, you know, messing yeah. around with the minds of the population. Like yeah. people don't, I don't think the Iraqi people disliked us before we started bombing them. No. Well, true story. Yeah. yeah. I would hate someone too. But yeah, yeah, when I was there, I mean, they were just giving up friendly, nice here. Dang, yeah. here you know. Of course, we just, you know, bombed the crap out. But they were never fighting us. It's the yeah. same way. We think uh, us with our embargoes against Venezuela and, uh, and destroying them, uh, I mean, we've done it everywhere. So, yes. uh, and, and, and if you don't travel the world and realize that, hey, these people are just trying to live like we are. Yeah, you have to get that 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 other perspective, and you're never going to get it. Yeah, you're never going to get it until you get outside and, yeah. and just and travel some, and go. Wow, you know, they're yeah. for the most part, people are really pretty nice. Yeah, they're fun to talk to. Yeah, I really enjoy them. And if you don't like their, you know, whatever, but they're still friendly. Yeah. yeah. Like if they're, uh, they don't have great conversation because, you know, those rude people don't know English, you know, well, you don't have to hang around them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that is great. Well, the whole point, the whole uh, moral of this uh, talk really is it builds character. It builds character to, to live outside of your comfort zone and traveling. Well, yeah, that's the only way you're going to build character. You've got to get outside your comfort zone. Right. You'll never you'll never change unless you do. Yeah. And with that, uh, if you're in the local area, every Sunday at 1.30, come out and have a good time with us and enjoy these conversations. And you can also find us on all the alternatives. And any of you people that are relatively intelligent, you already know what they are, so I don't need to repeat myself. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.